Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, one of the big upgrades you can do to your camera equipment is to move to a system that allows you to have interchangeable lenses. But that can be quite a complicated decision. There are lots of different manufacturers and lots of different systems out there. But one thing that will influence your decision is when you pick the sensor size. Now, when it comes to cameras with interchangeable lenses, there are basically three different types of sensor size. There's micro four thirds, there's APS-C, and there's full frame. So the question is, how do these three compare? Well, if you want to find out, please let me explain. So first of all, let's start with a caveat. This is a basic introduction to the differences between these three sensor sizes. Yes, there are gonna be things that I'm just gonna gloss over. Yes, there are gonna be things that I'm not even going to mention. And of course, there is probably gonna be instances of a particular camera from a particular manufacturer with a particular lens that does a particular thing. Yes, that's all gonna be true. But this is basically designed to be a general introduction. And the reason I'm saying all that is because it seems to me from looking at forums on the internet that pixel peepers, kind of people who get quite obsessed about these things, can be very vocal and almost angry about the kind of things that can be said. So please, I'm just trying to give folks a nice gentle introduction to this topic. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into our topic. Basically, on a digital camera, in place of the film, there is a sensor. And the sensor is a thing that captures the light and uses that to generate the uh, photo. Now, there are different sizes of sensors. If you look inside a mobile phone, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little sensor. And then as you get up through bigger cameras, you know, kind of compact cameras and sort of travel cameras, the sensor sizes vary, vary all the way up until you get to the kind of the 35 millimeter, which is the equivalent of the 35 millimeter film from way back in the day. And that is the kind of the full frame sensor. Now, of course, there are even bigger cameras than that for even more professional usage. But now we're talking about consumer and pro-consumer usage. So here is a quick chart to show you the difference between Micro Four Thirds, APS-C and Full Frame. And as you can see, Full Frame is the biggest and then APS-C is next and Micro Four Thirds after that. Now, while the actual physical dimensions change in each sensor, remember because we're talking about area here, the area can actually increase quite rapidly. So there is a big area difference between, let's say, a Full Frame and a Micro Four Thirds. An area, of course, means more space for pixels and for light to be captured by those pixels. Now, in terms of light capture, it's generally recognized that in good daylight or in good lighting situations, the sensor size isn't going to have that much of a difference. And part of the reason for that is because of pixel density. Although you might have, you know, a kind of a full frame camera that's a 26 megapixels, when you kind of move down to micro four thirds, it's not the same 26 megapixels, it's probably a lot less, maybe 16 megapixels or 20 megapixels. So the result of this is that you still get a good number of large pixels for capturing the light. Of course, when it comes to absolute resolution, the more megapixels, the better, and the bigger the sensor, which means the more sensitive those pixels is better still. Now, the big difference can be seen when you start to take photos in low light. So if you are a wedding photographer, for example, or you like to take photos inside of, let's say, a museum where you're inside of a building, maybe there's not that much natural light, then a bigger sensor is going to be better. But even that statement has to come with a caveat. And one of the caveats, of course, is that sensor technology changes from one year to another. So what you could get out of a full frame camera, maybe sort of three years ago, might now be matched in terms of the sensitivity, the noise reduction and the image processing in a smaller uh, sensor camera today. So things are always moving and they're always fluid because there are always advances in what each camera sensor can capture. And one other thing to mention about the kind of the light capture, and that is that the micro four thirds uses a four by three aspect ratio, whereas APS-C and full frame use a three by two aspect ratio. And that will of course have an impact on the shape of the photos and your composition of those photos. Now, because the sensors are different sizes, what it means is you have to have different lenses so you can capture in the same uh, field of view. So for example, a micro four thirds system has a 2x crop compared to a full frame. 
So what that means, if you took a full frame picture at a particular focal length, let's say at uh, 18 millimeters, then the picture that you would capture at 18 millimeters on a micro four thirds would be reduced by a factor of two. Now to get around this, of course, because people don't just want to take small pictures, we want to be able to take landscapes, we want to be able to take portraits, you get different lenses that attach to different systems. So for example, a kit lens on a typical micro four third system might run from let's say 12 millimeters up to 32 millimeters. Whereas the kit lens on a standard full frame system might run from say 24 millimeters up to 70 millimeters. Now because the micro four thirds is a two times crop, actually if you double the uh, focal length, you'll see that they're talking about the same range. So it's 12 millimeters on micro four thirds and 24 millimeters on full frame. Well, two times 12 is 24. And at the other end on my uh, Lumix micro four thirds camera that I have, it goes up to 32, which doubled is 64. And the kit lens on a full frame might be 24 to 70. So you can see 64 and 70 are very, very close. So it kind of gives you that same optical range and the same kind of photos from landscapes to portraits can be captured. And APS-C, which kind of sits in the middle, my Canon APS-C camera has a kit lens of 18 to 55. So all the different cameras, regardless of the sensor system, are able to capture everything from, you know, kind of uh, landscapes down to uh, portraits and even into uh, macro modes if you need to go there. But a side effect of having these different focal lengths is that it will affect the depth of field. And I've got a whole video on depth of field and bokeh and how that works, and you can find that just up here. But one of the things that affects depth of field is the focal length. So because you are actually changing the lenses, let's say from 12 to 32 or 24 to 70 on a full frame, that will have an impact on the depth of field. And therefore, what they basically say is that on a full frame, it's easier to capture a shallow depth of field with that nice bokeh effect that you get in the background. And that's purely because of the focal length that you can then use with that camera. So we talked about the physical size of the sensor. We've talked about that, the effect that has on the focal range. And we've talked about the effect that the focal uh, length has on depth of field. There's one more thing we need to touch on that is size. Now a full DSLR will be a pretty big camera and the lenses are pretty large. Whereas you compare that to, let's say, a micro four thirds system, the lenses are going to be much smaller. So if you find yourself doing a lot of kind of running and gunning, if you're kind of a travel photographer, then you may find that using a micro four thirds system is better for you. If you don't mind lugging around all the gear that, and you want to be able to capture those low light photos, then you might want to invest in a DSLR system. Now, if you're wondering what do I use, well, I actually have a micro four thirds camera and I have some micro four thirds lenses and I also have a, a Canon APS-C camera and I think I've got four different lenses to go with that. And I haven't upgraded to full frame because I don't see the need for it in the kind of photography that I do. It's very convenient having the micro four thirds camera. I can stick it in my pocket and I can go off and do travel photography. And here I'm recording now on a Canon with an APS-C uh, sensor and the kit lens. And that's absolutely great for the videoing that I do here in my studio. And one quick last note, don't fall into the trap of thinking that if you buy a bigger frame camera, let's say a full frame camera, for example, then it's gonna make you a better photographer. Photography is about composition and light and capturing the moment and using the tools that you have in terms of shutter speed and in terms of aperture to make a great photo. And you can do that just as well on a micro four thirds or on an APS-C system. It's not gonna magically happen if you buy a full frame camera. Okay, so just to sum up, full frame is bigger than APS-C. APS-C is bigger than micro four thirds. In low light, a bigger sensor will generally capture better photos. Because of the sensor size, you have to have different focal ranges on the lenses. And that is why there are different kit lenses that come with these different cameras. But of course, when you change the focal length, it has an effect of the depth of field. And so therefore it can be easier to capture shallow depth of field with that nice bokeh effect when you're using a full frame camera or if you're using an APS-C camera compared to a micro four thirds camera. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. It's very possible on those other cameras to do it. It's just easier 
on a full frame camera. And finally, there is the issue of size and weight and price that come into all these different systems. And don't fall into the trap of thinking that if you buy the most expensive camera, you're gonna be the world's best photographer. That just doesn't happen. Okay, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. As I said, I'm not looking for lots of acrimonious moanings in the comments. This is a general overview and I hope it's been useful. I will read the comments and I will reply when it is appropriate. Okay, you know what else I'm gonna ask you to do? Please subscribe, please share this on social media and well, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.